Being killed by me is the same as encountering a catastrophe. These were the words uttered by Muzan Kibutsuji, the main antagonist of Demon Slayer. As terrifying as his mistress, Muzan Kibutsuji is the ultimate evil in the world of Kimetsu no Yaiba, the original demon and thus the Demon King. Muzan's reign of terror in Japan lasted for over thousand years. A monster whose powers makes even the deadliest demons tremble in fear in his presence. Muzan is nearly immortal in the true sense of the word. Able to survive the captation and even the complete destruction of his body together with the ability to create and control other demons. Muzan is a nightmare beyond comprehension. And yet, despite being the demon king and evil incarnate, Muzan, as all the other demons, was once a human being. Well, as you know, Kimetsu no Yaiba is a manga and anime that has conquered the hearts of thousands of people worldwide. Because it's excellent animation, sensational fights, and the mysteries that leave you on the edge of your seat. And some of those mysteries are How the hell did Muzan become the first Oni? Why would the most powerful Oni of all go to the trouble of killing a family that lived in the middle of nowhere? and seem to fear a boy without apparent extraordinary abilities. I don't even need to say that this video is going to be a compilation of spoilers, right? But if you still want to proceed, grab the popcorn and here comes the story. Yo, join here and to talk about what? Mozan Kibutsuji, the one who literally has Demon or Demoniac in his last name and cruel, cold-blooded, miserable and merciless in his name. Whether his parents is smoking bananas or first how the future to name their children Wretched Demon Dance Road, I don't know. But if people can name their children as Facebook, so version 2.0 and XA812, I think Mudan Kibutsuji is kind of sweet. But anyway, this citizen is the main antagonist of Demon Slayer and the very reason for this hunter to exist in the first place. Muzan was born in Japan, more precise in the Heian era, which is the last period of classical Japanese history, which goes from 794 to 1185, which means Muzan is a little bit older than you and me. Just a little bit. And Muzan was a very complicated baby. He suffered several cardiac arrests while he was still in his mother's womb. And when he was born, people thought he was a stillborn. That is, a baby who is born without life. After all, he had no pulse much less breathed. However, showing that he had resilience even before he had teeth, when he was being taken to the crematory room, he let out his first screams or cries and it saved his life. Unfortunately. But from then on, it would only be backwards. He had very fragile health, he was always sick, he didn't even have the energy to get out of bed properly and most doctors had given up on him stating that he would most like die before the age of 20 and that made the little young Muzan develop thanatophobia which for those who don't know is <coughs> a deep fear of death or the process of dying but notice that I said most doctors, not all, and that was not by chance. A doctor who probably did medicine for love did not give up on Muzan. He kept trying to find a cure and he initiated an experimental treatment through the blue spider lily a flower with mythical characteristics. But as a demon here, 
Some people understand that this man was not even a doctor and that he only used Muzan as a guinea pig to test the blue spider lily. But being a good doctor or a mad scientist, the treatment was implemented. And initially Muzan thought the treatment had not worked as it had not improved. And this made him furious and drove him to kill the doctor. And this combination of bad, disease, blood, hate, and the blue spider lily created the first Oni. And make no mistake, despite being sick, Muzdan was already living up to his name. He was spoiled as hell, he cared little for the people around him, and he killed that doctor without thinking twice. Which, of course, turned out to be a mistake shortly afterwards, because contrary to what Muzan had thought, the treatment had worked. His body was much stronger, what he realized when he killed the doctor, and he no longer needed to worry about his illness, because now, he was practically immortal. But this cure had come with a price. His blood had been modified and he could now be considered an Oni, a demon, the first of his race. And as a consequence or punishment, he instinctively knew he could no longer go out in the sunlight. Because if he went out, he would instantly be turned to ash. And of course, he had a craving for human flesh. And let's face it, he was no Hannibal Lecter who made fancy dishes after fancy dishes with human meat, but the bro couldn't care less. He had no hesitation in ingesting human flesh. In fact, his first victims were his own family. But one thing left him better than a wet head, the fact that he couldn't go out in sunlight. Muzdan Kibutsuji didn't want to have any limitation, so for several years he looked for the blue spider lily without success, because this flower was quite rare, only appeared in specific places a few times a year and only bloomed in sunlight. Are you sensing what I'm trying to say? When he could go out to get this flower, if he knew where it was, it wouldn't be there anymore. And the only person who might have known something was the dead doctor he had killed. Hermes a bit bit. So the solution that Muzan found was to transform more and more demons using his blood in the hope that one of them would be or become resistant to sunlight. So he would eat this demon and become resistant to the sun himself. Over the years, Muzan took different forms, being my favorite Michael Jackson, and he got married five times. And the bro was a piece so big of Michael Matter that all his wives committed suicide. Oh boy. But okay, you're okay. Miracle misfortunates aside, centuries passed and no demon proved resistant to the sunlight. Nor did they have access to the blue spider lily. And so, Muzanki Butsuji's weakness continued to be the sun's race. However, Muzan's choices didn't have consequences only for him. The fact that he became a demon cursed his entire family, what was left of it, generation after generation. And what family is this? The Buyashik family. And you are right, the surname is no stranger to you. It belongs to Buyashik Kagawa the current leader of the Demon Slayer Corps, the Demon Hunter Squad. And although Muzan doesn't use the surname Ubuyashik, he belongs or once belonged to the Ubuyashik family. And because he became a demon, the gods cursed the Ubuyashik family and all the babies in that family were born life.
actress. And when the wish were on the brink of extinction, a prince told them that if the cause of the problem was the creation of a demon, so they should dedicate their lives to try to eliminate it. So maybe this way their lives would be spared. And that's how the demon slayers started existing. However, this alleviated the problem but did not solve it. The babies were born alive but the curse continued and all of them would die before the age of 30, even dedicating their lives to the annihilation of Muzan and the Onis created by him. Initially, the demon slayers were swordmen, but they didn't know how to use the different breaths. They only learned how to use these breaths when their path crossed with Yoriti Tugikun, the progenitor of the breathing technique, user of the breath of the sun, and owner of the Hanafuda earrings. Well, I will tell the Yuriti story in another video, but what you need to know now is that he was born with the gift of the transparent world. That is, he saw people from the inside, their organs and veins. And never before the phrase, what really matters is what is on the inside, made so much sense. He was born with the hunter's mark, he was a prodigious word man, he lost everything who was important to him and that's why he became a demo slayer. He taught the briefing techniques to other hunters, he saw that Muzan had seven hearts and five brains and when Muzan found him, Muzan feared death for the first time in many millennia. This legendary hunter caused Muzan to be divided in 1,800 parts and of those 1,800 parts, he managed to destroy over 1,500 parts. But the parts that were too small to be destroyed managed to escape and group together forming a head and later Muzan's body. And from that day forward, Muzan, as well as the demons he had created, feared the merch side of the Hanafuda earrings, and the most feared breath became the breath of the sun, the breath used by Yoriti. Yoriti would never met Muzan again, not in life, but he passed on his will, his earrings, and his breath of the sun to the Kamado family, meaning Tanjiro's predecessors. And that's why Muzan went to the Tanjiro's house on that fateful day when everyone died. Or almost everyone. Not because he wanted to kill them all, but because he had hope that he could turn them into demons and that at least one would be resistant to sunlight. For all the history I just talked about, we could make Muzan resistant to the sun as well, annihilating his only weakness. But fortunately or unfortunately, his blood proved too strong to the Kamado family and they died. Or so Muzan thought because Nezuko was alive and in the future she would walk in the sunlight. But this is spoilers for all their videos. And Tanjiro wasn't even in the house. And that's also why Muzan fears Tanjiro when he sees him for the first time. Not because he is afraid of Tanjiro, but because of what the earrings Tanjiro is wearing represent. Those earrings refer to the only time he was almost killed after having turned into a demon. The only time he needed to fear his own life after ceasing to be a human being. That is it guys, my Japanese is unfortunately non-existent, so I apologize for my pronunciation, but I hope you managed to ignore this factor and enjoy the video. Did you expect the story to be like this or did you imagine something else? Did the first one impress you or not? I confess that the story behind the Hanafuda earrings 
surprise me a little bit. Well, I am 100% sure you realize that English is not my first language and this is still a work in progress. I was a little afraid and ashamed to post it, but if I never try, I will never improve it. So thank you so much for watching and for your patience. And as you also probably realize, the channel is still in the beginning, so I need your help, I need your likes, your comments and your subscription to keep making videos 